Hi, welcome friends to another kitchen scrubby tutorial. Uh, today we're going to be doing a kitchen scrubby out of the Red Heart Scrubby Sparkle Yarn. On the label there is a pattern for a knitted version, but we're going to be doing a crochet one. And these are what the scrubbies look like. I intentionally made them curved, which I think is so much easier for doing dishes. It gives you something to grip onto. These are great. Okay, so out of one skein of yarn, I was able to get about eight of these scrubbies. Um, they do vary. Some of people get a little bit more of some, a little bit less, but eight on the three that I tested here. Now what I did first was I went ahead and I took the tail end and the center pull of my yarn and I went ahead and balled them up myself into a cake. Um, you don't have to do it. I just think it's a lot easier to work with it with the two strands together. Um, just to go ahead and ball it up with two strands together. Uh, you could use the center pull on two skeins or you could use one skein, the tail end and the center pull and put them together um, either way. So you're gonna do two strands together of the scrubby sparkle yarn. You're gonna need a 6.5 millimeter K hook and then you need some scissors. I like to use a yarn cutter. I love these. If you guys aren't familiar, these are great. Um, you can take them anywhere. Just put it on your purse, your keychain, necklace. Um, that cuts really great. And you can't get your fingers in there. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. Okay, let's begin with our slip knot. If you don't know how to do a slip knot, um, I'm going to teach that here. There's lots of tutorials on how to do it. Let's go ahead and find one and then continue with this lesson. All right, so slip knot. And now we're going to do a circle start. I don't do a magic ring for this because I think the circle start gives it more durability. So that's what we're going to do. You're in chain four. One, two, three, four. And this first chain that you made, you're going to go ahead and slip stitch. So you put your hook into that stitch and pull up a loop and then pull the loop on your hook. And there you have your circle start. You should be able to put one of your fingers through there. And this hole here is what we're going to be working into. So go ahead and chain three. This tail you can crochet right on top of. If you do that, you won't have to sew it in at the end. So just lay it alongside and just go on top of it. All right, so we do our first double crochet into our circle. All these stitches that go into the circle. Your yarn over, put your hook through the center, and you're gonna pull up a loop. Okay? So you've got one, two, three loops on the hook. You, we are working with the double strands, so you can see we've got two, four, six technically, but we're gonna call them three loops on the hook like a regular double crochet. You're going to yarn over, pull through the first two, yarn over, and pull through the last two. And we're going to do 14 of those. So the first chain three uh, is going to count as a double crochet. And it looks like one. So we're going to go one, two. So that's two double crochets already. So get to 14. Yarn over. Pull through two, pull through two, yarn over, insert your hook into that same circle. I'm gonna go, just, just putting that tail down. Yarn over, pull up a loop. We got our one, two, three. Yarn over, pull through two. Yarn over, pull through two. And you might have to slide your stitches over, so I still got a hold of the circle here. Just go ahead and take your stitches and slide them over. And then if this tail starts to bother you, once you got a couple, you know, double crochets over there, you can go ahead and cut this off. It's not gonna go anywhere. All right. And just keep going until you have a total of 14.
Okay. Now don't worry about me crocheting fast. I'm doing that just for the purpose of the video. It takes me a very long time to upload my videos. And once I teach how to do the double crochet and we're just doing it 14 more times, you can just go ahead and pause. There'll be time to pause and then restart when you're ready. Okay, so if you lost count of your stitches, um, which I wasn't paying attention to mine, this is how I count mine. I pretend I'm going up a ladder. Now this is a fuzzy yarn, so it's hard to see it, but I can feel it. So I have my thumb here and I can, that's one step of the ladder, one. And you can see here, two, and I just kind of climb up. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. So anytime you work with like a fuzzy yarn that's and you're working with a double crochet stitch, that's kind of a nice easy thing to do. You could spread them out too. So we've got one, two, three, but climbing the ladder works too. All right, so now you got your 14 double crochets. We're gonna go ahead and slip stitch to the beginning. Um, I'm not gonna go and try to find the top of that chain. There's really no point in this pattern. I'm just gonna go this whole side here. I'm just gonna go ahead and put my hook into it. So here I am, put my hook into the whole thing, pull up a loop and pull that through a loop of my hook. So just a slip stitch to close it up and then we're joined. All right, now we're gonna go ahead and chain three. One, two, three. Now remember this does count as a double crochet. For this round, we're gonna do two double crochets into every stitch. So I'm gonna do another crochet, a double crochet, into the same stitch that I'm at. So yarn over, and I already know I kinda of went into this hole here, so I'm gonna go back into that hole, and I'm gonna pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. So that's my two. I'm gonna push those over a little bit because this is my next post, and on top of that post, is a stitch that I need to work into right there. Now, you have two choices here. In the written pattern, I'm going into the top here. So yarn over, I'm going to the normal stitches. Okay. So on top of each post that you see here, right on top is the V stitch. And you go, well, looks like a little V, or I call them deer tracks. You have to go underneath that deer track. Same thing, here's the next one. You see the post, follow it up, right on top. But if it is hard for you to see it, it is okay to just go into each one of these loops. So this, this big space here, go in there. Next one, go ahead and go in that one. There's a falcon right above me. <laughs> Anyways, this is where you go. Just go into each one of these spaces. Make it easy for yourself. So um, this is a very forgiving pattern. So I'm gonna do one in the space, and then I'm gonna just go ahead and do the other ones um, where they're supposed to go. So let's do this one in the top of the stitch. So I'll follow it up. Yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. There's gonna be two double crochets into every one. So let me go ahead and put another one in that same spot. All right, now I'm just gonna show you the other way of doing it. Here's this space here, yarn over. Pick one or the other, don't do both like I am. I'm just doing it for a demonstration. Um, yarn over, go through that whole space. Just go ahead and put your hook right in there. And then two in the same spot. And then as you can see, you, you really can't tell. It's a fuzzy yarn, it's very forgiving. All right, now I'm gonna continue. I'm gonna put them where they're supposed to go, but don't feel bad if you can't see the stitches and you need to put it in the space, that'll work. I had to un undo that little part because I went into that space instead of the top of that stitch. So for my count to be correct, I need to go there. All right, so two double crochets in, into the top of every stitch or into each space. So at the end of this round, we're gonna have 28 stitches. So 28 double crochets, including that first chain three. <laughs> I 
There's a person in my neighborhood imitating the, the falcon now. I do my videos outside, so I'm asking for it. I'm not going to edit it out. I'll just leave it there. Hopefully it's not too distracting for you guys. I wish I could show you this bird. It's beautiful. And huge. He always sits right on top of this big tree next to me. All right. So now we got 28 stitches. And then you can go ahead and join into the top of that chain or like I did before, just go into the space. It's not really gonna matter for this pattern. I like to make it easy for myself. All right, and now we're in the last round. In this round, um, I'm just gonna chain one. And now we're gonna single crochet all the way around loosely. Now, because we're doing that, it's gonna bring the sides up and give it that curve. You know, something for you to hold on to. And then we're finished. Let's go ahead and do that. And same thing, if you can't find the stitches, you could go ahead and go into these spaces, that's fine. So the end of this round, you should still have 28 stitches. And just do it kind of loose. The tighter you make it, uh, the more curved it's gonna be. Uh, but I think this round looks a lot nicer if you do it loose. You could go up a hook size if that's hard for you to hard for you to make loose. I hope after this video is finished, that bird is still there so I can try to get a picture for you guys. So you know who's interrupting. <laughs> Okay, so I was watching the bird for some of this. So I might not even have the right amount of stitches. I wouldn't, myself, at this, on this pattern, I don't really, you don't really need to check it. Looks good to me. So go ahead and cut. Well, I guess I should show you the last part, what I just did. We're just gonna slip stitch, the same thing. So you're gonna go ahead and put your hook into that first stitch that you made, or that first chain. You know, pull up a loop, pull through your work. Oh, I just flew away. <laughs> I was gonna get a picture. I'll get one next time. All right, and that's it. We're all done. Just go ahead and take a, a needle and weave this in. And a beautiful kitchen scrubby. Thanks, guys, for watching.